Hello, it's Beanie Tiados, and we're doing another Hobie Brown. Is a um, jealous Hobie ex listener. I'll read you the summary right now. It says, where they're out at a party and reader just so happened to see one of their male best friends and they're in the back smoking together and Hobie just so happens to walk in and see the male reader blowing smoke into her mouth. This has she, her pronouns, I'm pretty sure. And uh, just a little content warning, there is a mention of smoking and smoking weed um, in this. So yeah, just a little, little, you know, um, <laughs> warning, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. The link to this uh, fan fiction and my Spider-Man playlist will be in the description. And also, my Spider-Man playlist will also be at the end of the video. But <laughs> yeah, let's get started. You feel quite lightheaded. The booming music pounds into your skull. A couple of bright strobe lights and people screaming over the loud music trying to hear each other. You feel the social battery draining with every clink of a glass that you hear in the background. Partying um, seemed like a great idea for the first two hours of being there, but as the night continued to go on, you just wanted to go to bed and wash off the smell of cheap beer off of you. The only good thing about sp is spending time with Hobie. You wince at another screech of a guitar, riff brooms out of the speakers as you lean towards Hobie's ear, an excuse falling out of your lips. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom for a bit. Sure, love, I'll watch you drink. Hobie responds, moving your pint closer to where he is while he continues talking to his friend. You slide off of the boot, fixing your t-shirt and wefting down through the sea of people on the dance floor. You try to avoid crashing into a few of them. The washroom sign looks like a beacon beckoning for you as much as you'd like to receive it, but suddenly you hear a scream of your name getting called, or rather someone screaming at you. You do a complete 180 to find out who it was that was trying to call you. Here, on your right. You're not sure if that was for you, but still you look to your right and lo and behold, you see your old high school mate peeking behind the doors to the bar's balcony. David, is that you? You squint, trying to find, figure out his distinguishable features. Yeah, get your ass over here. He opens the door fully for you. Scrambling towards the door, you try and push past the dancers, finally entering the balcony with your best friend as he hugs you tightly, slightly lifting you off of the floor and you giggle at their little reunion. Holy shit, duck, it's been so long, long time no see. He pulls away, taking a good look at you. I haven't seen you since graduation, you look fucking fit. Shut it up, you ass. You l playfully slap his arm. Come on, it's quiet out over here. He leads you towards the railing, bringing out a fancy case of smokes. You want a ciggy? He offers you one as you take it. You whistle at the fancy engravings on the cigarette case. Wow, daddy dearest is still paying your bills. You little daddy's boy. You tease him as you help him light your cigarette with a matching fancy case. Fucking hell, leaving the lighter. Shut up, it was a gift. He teasingly shoves you. Do you remember when we used to sneak around and chain smoke in our attic? Yeah, we almost bur burnt your dad's postcard collection, you laugh at the fond memory. So, how are you? You two get to talking, exchanging stories and remembering fond memories until you get about talking about your love life. Ooh, little ducky has a man, he jokingly blows smoke in your face. Meanwhile, while you were having your conversation, Hobie leans against the doorway, watching the little interaction between you two. He, get, he got a bit worried when you didn't come back to the table, basically searching the entire bar, when he finally found you cozying up to an unknown man. See, listen, Hobie isn't usually a very jealous guy. Whenever someone flirts with you while he's si sidled up beside, beside you, egging them on. Can I have that drink too? Oh shit, look at a black card. You're loaded, bruv. She has two left feet. I'm available though. Mate. <laughs> Sorry, these are just like random phrases. They're just so British. <laughs> I can't help but laugh. What's your favorite song? Oof, nice shoes, bruv. He does this because he fully trusts you. At the end of the day, he's the one who goes home with you. So of course, whenever someone gets a little too touchy or invades your personal space, he jumps to being more protective if they don't let up. And he is more than ready to square up with whoever... When he sees the blonde sm blowing smoke on your face as you giggle, it's the same smile that you give him, and when he sees that man lightly push you and pushing your shoulder back, something just snaps inside of him. His ears start to ring, and he didn't even catch what the man had said to you. Hoey stomps towards you. 
you not even noticing as you continue on smiling and talking to your friend. When you finally feel a familiar arm snaking around your waist, you look up towards Hobie, his dark eyes glaring angrily at your friend and the dark aura around him. Hobie's knuckles shake as he clenches it tighter, ready to strike. Noticing his emotion, you quickly try to douse his anger, but he opens his mouth before you. Who the fuck are you? He holds onto your waist tighter, and why the fuck are you flirting with her? Some nosy people start looking towards your ways. You try to speak up, but then again, David beats you to it. I'm guessing this is your man. I'm David, and fuck off, David, he barks out, and stay the fuck away. He angrily points at your friend. David gestures in a surrender. <laughs> all right, mate, calm down. She's all yours. Hobie already turned his back away. David winks at you. Thank God Hobie didn't catch that, or they would have started something. Hobie guides you by the hand as you try to explain, but he couldn't hear you. Though the blaring music, he brings you outside and Hobie heads towards an alley. And you follow closely behind, trying to get his attention. Oh, God's sake, Hobie, will you stop? Hobie kicks an abandoned box, sending it flying across the alley. Shit, I'm sorry, he breathes out heavily, his left eye twitching. Are you okay? Hobie finally towards you. Yeah, are you? I've never seen you so angry. You cross the gap between the both of you. You tend to li tentatively try and hold him. Just breathe, you say as your hands hover over his arms. He takes a deep breath, slowing and calming down. Hobie pinches the space between your eyes, his eyes. He takes a deep breath, slowly calming down. Hobie pinches the space between his eyes. Better? You rub his arms lovingly. Yeah, he answers you, trying to avoid your eyes, as his eyebrows are still knit together in anger. You can finally explain everything. Hey, listen, David's a close friend of mine. Since high school, trust me, you don't have to worry about him. You hug his torso. I'm not jealous. Sure, of course not. You cup his jaw and he finally looks you in the eye. I'm not bloody jealous. He huffs out, looping his fingers through the belt loop of your jeans, bringing you even closer to him. I know, I know. You try and you please him, but hypothetically... If you were, you don't have to worry about it. You're just for me, babe. You move your hands over his neck, guiding him down towards your face. Whether it's an old friend or some random stranger, know that they'll never replace you in my life. I love you, Hobie Brown. Don't ever forget that. Hobie looks into your eyes, searching for an ounce of dishonesty, but when he found none, ex except for your love and affection towards him, he dropped his forehead on your savoring all the love and that oozes out of you. You close your eyes and rub circles over his neck, trying to ease the tension folded into his muscles. Love you too. Let's go home, yeah? He reluctantly pulls away, still holding your gaze. You nod enthusiastically. Does that love extend to apologizing to David? You ask, trying to test the waters. Hobie tilts his head with a slight glare and a non-verbal way of saying, why would I do that? Understanding what it means, you continue. I may have invited him to lunch tomorrow. You smile, waiting for his reaction. Hobie drops his head on your shoulders with a slight thump. He groans, realizing that he needs to make peace with your friend.